My name is Annette and you might know me on social media as Netters Plays. Well today I'm going to go over the games that I acquired and my impressions of them whether I play them or not for the month of September. Now I managed to pick up a lot of games and that's partially because I attended a convention and also because I created a event called Feldfest. So I acquired a little bit more than generally. Um, so I want to go over those games, but I also covered them in part of my video for Pacificon. So I'll leave the link below to my other two videos, Pacificon and also Feldfest. And I kind of go over those games down there in those videos too. So you can go ahead and check those links down below in the description. So let's get to the games. So the first games that I'll go over are the games that I acquired at Pacificon. Now I already went over those generally in my previous video, so I'll just go ahead and briefly go through these games uh, here in this video. So the first game I'll talk to you about is Lair of the Lich King. Now this is a uh, game that I've never heard about and I haven't played it yet, nor do I think it's a game for me. So um, I think it's a game that it's supposed to be an adventure path game and I'm not sure if it's really for me and I don't think I'm going to keep it for long. But um, yeah, I acquired this in a raffle at Pacificon and so it didn't cost me anything. So yeah, it's, it's a cool little treat, but I don't think it's for me. So that's the Lair of Lich King. Another game that I acquired too in the same raffle is uh, Fleet, the Pleiad Conflict. Now, Fleet is a game by uh, Daniel Frixlius, which is the same designer as Terraforming Mars. So Terraforming Mars has actually been getting a lot of really good reviews and has been doing really well in the market. So I was kind of curious because I've never heard of this game and I guess this is the precursor, the game that he created before Terraforming Mars. So I'm, I'm really stoked to kind of check this game out because I haven't heard too much about it. and. Hopefully I could see his design aspect of like where he came from in this game and how it kind of formed and developed into the Terraforming Mars game. I wonder if they're related or not and same mechanisms or whatever, but I haven't played this one and my first impressions is a great surprise because it's a great designer, but unfortunately I just don't know too much about this game. Another game that I acquired at Pacificon is Asara. Now, Asara, I did manage to play, and this game itself was a really good treat. Unfortunately, I didn't play it with the right rules. I kind of missed up on the rules a little bit, but when we played it, we still had a lot of fun with it. And so my first impression, because I'd never heard of this game before, and I acquired it um, just because it was just a really great price, and it was also by Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kingsley, so I picked it up because I, they're great designers. And fortunately enough, it was a great little game. So I give this a really good thumbs up because it was something that surprised me. I wasn't expecting a really good game out of this and it was fun. It's light gateway kind of game, but it was a lot of fun. So that's Asara. Another game that I acquired at Pacificon is Akrotiri. Now Akrotiri is a two player only game. And I acquired this at the flea market for really great price. It's out of print and I've been trying to get this game for a while now. And so it was a must buy when I saw it at the flea market and it happened to be at a great price. So I acquired this, I didn't play it at the convention but I have played it since. And my impression is that this game is just a mind twist. <laughs> but it's in a good way because I like this kind of game. But I really like this game. Uh, it's a simple pick up and deliver those games are generally simple, but this game adds that extra map effect to it where you have these cards that kind of have these maps and placements where you can only build temples according to where the map is kind of outlaying where they should be placed. 
Now, this game I, I really enjoyed and I'm really looking forward to trying some more plays out with this. So that's Akrotiri. Another game that I acquired is Finca. So Finca I found at Pacificon for a really great price. Now I've played this game before and I've been eyeing this game, but it's been out of print and it's really high price. So I finally found it at Pacificon for a really good price and so I had to grab it. But anyways, this game is great. So if you ever get a chance to play this game, you should definitely try it out because it's out of print and they're gonna retheme the whole game. So I would get it if you're interested in these fruit markets in this map before they reprint it again. Another game that I acquired at Pacificon is Outer Planets. Now Outer Planets is an expansion to Leaving Earth. And so unfortunately I haven't played this game because it takes a long time, but also it's I've just been too busy to just sit down and really play it. But if you've ever heard of Leaving Earth, it's a great uh, mathematical space exploration and space race game. It's based off of history and also alternates it in the way you play it. And there's different missions that you're trying to accomplish and different explorations and different tests and research that you're trying to do. And so Outer Planets is just an expansion to that where you go out towards your uh, Jupiter and Uranus and Neptune and Pluto and all these other outer planets. So bigger missions, bigger things to just add on to a great game. So that's Outer Planets, the Leaving Earth expansion. Another game that I acquired at Pacificon was Quirkle. So Quirkle is a small, simple gateway game where it deals with little sets. But the cool thing is, um, I love this game. I was introduced to it by Joe and Joe Sondow. You can find him on Twitter too. But he introduced me to this game. I've been meaning to play it with him and so he finally introduced me to this game. I picked this up for a great price and I played it at the convention, but I mainly got it because I wanted to show my family too on how to play this game. It's a simple little game that kind of reminds me of Dominoes and Scrabble. You're trying to complete these sets, but you're trying to arrange them kind of like in a Scrabble type of way where they go up and down and you have to connect and intersect different areas by creating sets. And so you create sets of colors or sets of shapes. And so um, it's a really great little game where you can actually just introduce someone that doesn't really play all these big games and just have fun and it's really easy to teach and they usually pick it up pretty quick. So if you ever get a chance, you should try Quirkle. So in September, I also created another event, Feldfest. And so what I basically did was I invited a whole bunch of friends over to my place to play a whole bunch of Stefan Feld games. And we had a tournament, we had trivia, it was a lot of fun. I also made a video about that experience and I have the link down below in the description where you could see that video and all the details and my experience with it. But I, because of that, I also acquired a lot of games too for that. And one of the games that I acquired for Feldfest was the Castles of Burgundy, the card game. Now this game I thought was supposed to be a small compact card game version of the base game Castles of Burgundy. Now this game takes a lot of time to set up because there's so many pieces, it has a huge board. And so I decided to pick this game up because it's supposed to be compact since it's a card game. So I thought. <laughs> the problem is this game is a big huge table hog. Now I've only played it with two players and I've played it solo. And I suspect with more players, it's even gonna take up more space and take more time. But um, I would suggest actually just keeping this game down to solo play and two players, because if you're playing it with three or four players, then I would just suggest playing the base game. So this game is actually really good if you already know Castles of Burgundy, and also if you wanna play just a quick game with someone else or with yourself. So Castles of Burgundy, the card game, is a great game that I would suggest for one or two players. Another game that I acquired for Feldfest is the Pillars of the Earth Builder's Duel. Now, this game is by Stefan Feld, of course, but it's one of the weirdest games that I think he's made. <laughs> because it, he used this really weird mechanic that I've never seen in any other game. Now, he uses a coin flip mechanic, which is 
really odd because I've never seen it anywhere. But basically what you're doing is you have all these cards and you're setting up in a grid of three by three. So three across and three up and down. And so it'll be a grid of nine cards. And what you're doing is you're going ahead and you're going to place tokens either across, below, or diagonal. And then so is your opponent. And they have to intersect at least at one point on one card. And what you're going to do is you're going to fight over that one card. And the way you fight or duel over that card is by using these tokens right here. These tokens have a probability of either a good probability of landing you some little points or uh, the same probability to land you a lot of points. So you always have a 50-50 chance of either getting a lot of points or a little points or maybe not even any points. So what you're going to do is you're just going to go ahead and put it on your thumb like that and flip it. <laughs> and then you're going to show your opponent what you got and then you see if you beat them with the value that it flipped on. It's really weird. <laughs> So did I like it or not? Now, it's a Stefan Fell game, so I'm going to definitely keep the game because I'm collecting his games, but it's a really odd mechanic, and I can appreciate the use of that mechanic because I've never seen it anywhere else. I'm not sure if it's like a great mechanic, though. I'm kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> it's really odd for me, but I kind of like the fact that it's a coin flip and it actually makes it a dexterity game because if your opponent or yourself you're not good at flipping coins well this is really going to test you and you're going to be flipping those coins all over the place and it makes it fun so <laughs> at least that part's pretty funny but um yeah so uh the pillars of the earth duels builders duel if you've never heard of this game it's out of print but um you should check it out. It's something that's really quirky and really different and something I've never seen in any other game before. Another game that I acquired for Feldfest is Amerigo. Now Amerigo, I don't know if you can see this, but it's huge. It's a big game. And it's big because it has a cube tower inside of it. So let me show you this. This thing is the main, I guess, machine or engine of the game. This is what the game focuses on, really, of how the actions work. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick up all these different colored cubes, and you're going to dump them in here. And then the way that this cube tower works is that it's not completely free. There's some blocks right here, some, some kind of areas where it's blocking the flow of the cubes coming into the tower. And so the cubes coming out, there might be fewer, there might be some that were left behind, but generally what you're going to do is dump in some cubes and you might get some of those back out. And that's going to determine what actions you can take during your turn. And so what it also incorporates are these modular boards. So you're going to create these islands and such because it's about Amerigo. And so Amerigo Vespucci is uh, the founding, I guess, explorer, one of the founding explorers of America. That's what America was named after, the New World. So um, in Amerigo, you're exploring all these different islands, all this new land, and you're also trying to counteract these pirates that interfere by blowing them up with cannons. <laughs> so uh, this game, I, I really enjoyed this game. It's not one of his best games. However, I really enjoyed the fact that it has a cube tower and it determines what kind of actions you can take. Um, also, I, I really enjoyed the fact that you can really change up the game with these modular boards, and there's always something to do in this game. And you can also just kind of uh, build onto these different islands with your own personal camps and gain resources and use those resources to get points. It's a really big game. You know, it's one of his biggest games but it doesn't get that much uh, attention. So I, I would suggest getting it when it's on sale or something or trying it out first before you buy it because it might not be for you. I've heard a mix kind of reviews. Some people liked it, some people didn't, but um, I really enjoyed the game itself. So the next set of games are games that I purchased with Kickstarter. 
and they finally arrived this month. So I'll go ahead and go over those games. The first game that I acquired from Kickstarter is this game called Control. Now Control is from a first time designer and publisher and I haven't heard too many people talking about this game, but what I really enjoyed it about it is the fact that it has really cool design work on it. And it's also about space. I really like the fact that the designer and the publisher were working really uh, to just communicate with the Kickstarter backers also and bring this game about. So the game quality is great. Even though it's a deck of cards, it also came with these metal coins. So I'll show you these metal coins, which aren't necessary, but it's really cool and it's a really neat way to improve from just having so many backers for this game. They made the improvement of just adding in metal coins to the game. And I really appreciate that. Another cool thing is this artwork. So you can see here, the artwork on the cards is really amazing right there, both the back and the front. And it comes with like these cool like gold coloring to it too. Now um, how you play this game is really simple. So what you're doing is you have this deck of cards, you have a certain amount of cards in your hand, and what you're doing is you're either playing the card for its numbered value or you're playing it for the, um, for the action it has. You can also draw a card or, or discard, there's other things to it too. But basically what you're trying to do is get to 21 points before your opponent does. It's really simple. So this game itself, I've been taking it to restaurants and I've been taking it to bars just to play quick little games with. And um, I've really been enjoying it. I think this game control is really great for just taking out and playing a quick little game out somewhere. So if you ever get a chance, you should try control. Another game that I acquired from Kickstarter is Tiny Epic Western. Now, I haven't played this game yet, but I do have Tiny Epic Galaxies and I have Tiny Epic uh, Kingdoms too. And I've really been enjoying those two games, but I thought I'd add this game to it too. And now this cool little game, why I got it is because it has this weird little uh, effect with not just worker placement, but with poker mechanics. So I really wanted to get this game because of that. And also, it's really neat that it also came with these cool little dice. They're bullet dice. If you haven't seen it yet, it comes with these dice. Not regular dice that you can just throw about, but they're shaped like bullets. So whenever you're dueling, you can go ahead and throw those around. But yeah, I don't know too much about this game and how it's played or how well it plays. But um, yeah, I wanted to show you a Tiny Epic Western. So another game that I also got from Kickstarter is this game called Dreamwell. Now Dreamwell features the artwork from Tara McPherson and she's a, she's a contemporary artist and so she um, has really great artwork that I really enjoy because it's so dreamlike and it's also precious but it's all like really morbid too and I really enjoy that and the way she uses color tones and such. So. Um, the cool thing about this game is that it comes with all of her artwork all over the game. So I'll show you a little bit of that. But you can see these tiles right here. And you can see the type of artwork that she creates. And so I've heard a lot of people say that they really don't like the artwork. And so each to their own. But I really enjoy this artwork. And the cool thing is that it has all these cards too that come with it. And you can see the back of the cards and then you can see the front of the cards. And so I've heard people say that it's just all too busy, but it makes sense. So it makes sense for the gameplay. And the gameplay itself, I did manage to play it and it works in a really weird kind of puzzly kind of way. So what you're doing is you're grabbing all these tiles and laying them out in a five by five grid. And what you're doing is you have certain player pieces that you're moving across the board. And what you're trying to do is making sure you have certain backgrounds and certain friends, and then you can score these cards and get certain amounts of points. And so it's a really puzzly kind of way. And there's a simple version of playing the game, and then you can also play an advanced version. So it comes in two different uh, ways of playing the game. So um, I've only played it with the simple version, but in the advanced version, these tiles can actually be flipped over. So uh, it incorporates like, just another 
uh, way of playing the game that might twist your brain a little bit more. So actually the game itself, I really enjoyed. I think it's really simple, but it's really abstract and the abstract gameplay fits the uh, the actual artwork too so I can really appreciate that and I'm glad to have Dreamwell in my collection too. So the next game is a game that I've actually been wanting to get my hands on and that game is Codename Pictures. Now Codenames Pictures is kind of like a follow-up of the actual game Codenames and so Codenames is a party game and one of the few party games that I'll actually willingly want to play. <laughs> So uh, the cool thing with Codenames is that it's a game where you have these all these words laid down in a certain grid system and you're trying to work in teams, either red team or blue team, and you have teammates and you're the spy master and you're trying to make sure your teammates guess the right cards or the right words and you give them clues and such. And so Codename Pictures works in the same way. However, instead of words, you're going to use pictures, of course. So these pictures that you're going to be using, I don't know if you could see that, um, are just really odd and weird. <laughs> and so it's a matter of interpretation. And I've played the actual Codenames game with Dixit cards. And uh, it's either a hit and miss with different types of people. I think Dixit cards might be a little bit too much information uh, regarding color tones, re regarding the way the pictures are, are kind of interpreted. But I really like the fact that Codename Pictures uses just these simple tones, monotones, to the actual images. So color is not a factor in, involved in the game. And so Codename Pictures, I've played it a couple times, and again, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I'm really wanting to play this game with my family since Codenames itself was just a great game and everyone loved it in my family, so I'm wanting to take this game to them for the holidays. So hopefully I'll be able to go ahead and play more of this game. So this next game that I'm going to talk to you about is this game that I've been wanting to get for a while now. And it is Mystic Veil. Vale. Now, Mystic Veil vale itself is a not deck builder, it's a craft building game. Okay, so that's a little weird itself, but <laughs> but what you're basically doing is you have this hand of cards and you always have 20 cards in your deck. And so the way these look, well, they look like this in the sense that they're not completely filled. I mean, in fact, you have some blank cards too. And so what you're doing is you have these cards that you can purchase with different types of mana or different types of values. And so what you do is you purchase these cards in like this market place and then you're going to add it in to this. So now eventually this blank card just turns into a card that has substance to it. And so you go ahead and you reshuffle it into your deck and you play with it. Now you're going to be building and building and crafting all these different cards in your deck. And so the cool thing is that I really enjoyed it. I've played it already with two players, three players, and four players, and I've enjoyed it at every single count. Now the cool thing that I really enjoy about this game is the fact that you always have 20 cards in hand. 20 cards is really easy to memorize. So every time you're building your, your, your crafting your deck, you can easily figure out, you know, what you've assembled throughout the game. And so I've really been enjoying that fact because it's something where I can really develop and craft it to the way that I want it and um, memorize and kind of, you know, hope that, you know, my probability is, is good for the card that will come out in the future. So it's a really cool way of just condensing, like not just building a deck, but just crafting into your deck of 20 cards. So um, I really enjoyed that fact a lot. And I'm really looking forward to the expansion, which will add more of these clear type of cards to them too. So that way I can play around a little bit more with the crafting of these decks. So that is Mystic Veil. Vale. If you haven't tried it, and if you're a fan of deck building, and you wanna try something new and innovative, I would definitely suggest Mystic Veil. Vale. It's a great game. 
So those are all the games that I acquired for the month of September and I know it's a lot of games but I'm really proud of the fact that I managed to play a lot of those games. And I think it's because of the fact that I went to Pacificon and I went to Feldfest too. So I, I got those games on the table that I acquired. So um, yeah, if you have any further suggestions of any other games that I should look into or if you have any comments or any other, uh, if you want to find out more about the games that I managed to acquire, just go ahead and leave some comments down below and I'll get back to you. You can also like and subscribe if you want. And you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, I'm on Twitter too. It's all under Netters Plays. And then you can also follow me on Meeples Included and you can follow me on the Instagamers Network. So all the information is down below and at the end of the video. But thanks so much for watching and I'll go ahead and see you next time. Bye.